This deadly solar storm missed us by nine days. 2025 may be worse. In July 2012, a Carrington event level solar storm almost hit our planet. Fortunately, the storm missed us by some nine days, but we might not be so lucky. As another storm seems to be on the horizon, and this one threatens to be just as ravaging as the Carrington event. What would happen if our current world was hit by a solar storm? How would we be affected? And most importantly, how would we or could we even survive? Stay tuned as we go back in time to explore the disastrous effects of the 1989 solar storm, as well as the chances of our survival if we face another in the near future. On Thursday night, September 2nd, 1859, people woke up to witness a very rare phenomenon, an aurora. The gold miners in the Rocky Mountains rose from bed thinking the sun was up and proceeded to make coffee, eggs, and bacon just to find out that the sun wasn't up yet, and up in the sky were the most beautiful and dazzling colorful lights they'd ever seen. Thrilled by the scene before their eyes, they were enraptured by the aurora. Little did they know that the aurora signaled a very devastating looming event, the most epic geomagnetic storm ever released by the sun. The previous day before noon, Richard Carrington was observing the dark spots on the sun and saw a burst of light from the sun. Several hours after the bursts of light were witnessed from our burning star, the storm it triggered reached Earth, and its only warning was the aurora seen in the sky. The auroras could be seen around the world. The beautiful lighting was visible from the poles to low latitude areas such as South Central Mexico, Cuba, Hawaii, Queensland, Southern Japan, and China, and of course, the Rocky Mountains in the US. And the only technological innovation of those times, the telegraph systems, succumbed to the impact of the solar storm. The telegraph pylons went erratic and some of their operators even got electrical shocks. The telegraph systems failed all over North America and Europe. But something intriguing occurred at the same time. Despite being disconnected from their power supplies, a few operators were still able to transmit messages back and forth while relying on the current from the storm. Other telegraph stations weren't as fortunate as the sparks created from short circuits led to fire outbreaks that spread out. However, due to the limited dependence of this era on technology, the impact of the solar storm wasn't as severe as it would have been if a similar storm had hit us in 2012. To fully understand how disastrous that would be for our technology clingy world, let's examine how a solar storm works. The middle-aged burning star in our solar system is a constantly changing colossal ball of solar gases and sometimes it releases bursts of energy intermittently. These flares are believed to be caused by the presence of twists in the sun's magnetic field. As the sun spews forth electromagnetic radiation and huge clouds of hot plasma and threatens our planet, a phenomenon known as a CME occurs. CMEs, or coronal mass ejections, are a significant release of plasma and accompanying magnetic field from the sun's corona into the heliosphere and are capable of crashing into the magnetosphere of the Earth to cause geomagnetic storms. When a solar flare is released from the sun, billions of charged particles are released and these particles can travel as fast as 2,000 kilometers per second, making the fastest of these CMEs reaching the Earth in under 24 hours, and the slowest reaching us in about five days. Though only a small fraction results in plasma directed toward our planet, whenever this occurs, the Earth's magnetic field isn't strong enough to shield us, and a storm is created. We saw this in the Carrington event, and another significant storm was also the 1989 solar storm. The 1989 solar storm might not be as intensive as the Carrington event, as that was about three times as powerful, but it was the biggest solar storm of the 20th century. Although the storm was seen three days before it hit Earth, nothing could be done to curb its impact. Astronomers observed as the bursts of energy erupted from the surface of the sun 
and these outbursts headed toward the sun with great speed. The impact? The entire province of Quebec, Canada went pitch black, losing power to the geomagnetic storm. Well, this was not before they saw beautiful auroras in the sky. The Montreal Metro shut down, and though there was no blackout in the US, hundreds of power grids developed issues that only subsided with the storm. Satellites and communication systems got a huge blow. The satellites were out of control and developed strange problems that disappeared only after the storm went away. Radio signals were scrambled and mostly lost. This solar storm was in no way as strong as the Carrington storm, but still made a significant impact. And in 2012, another almost made an even greater impact. If it had hit Earth, it would have been the most intense solar storm in 160 years. A strangely huge and strong CME event occurred on July 23rd, but as the streams of charged particles were rushing toward our planet, it hit the spot Earth had just left, postponing the internet apocalypse that would occur if that event ever hit us. The charging plasma had missed Earth by about nine days since the equator of our burning star rotated around its own axis for a period of about 25 days. If the charging plasma had been nine days sooner, our technology would have taken a huge hit. However, it's not like we're totally in the clear because another storm is predicted to occur in 2025. So, what would happen if the 2025 solar storm hit us? And how would we fare? Well, it pretty much depends on the intensity of the solar system. A mild storm would not really cause much harm and might just result in a radio blackout and electronic failure. But if an X-class solar storm was to hit us, the results would be very drastic. A number of people believe the only dangers our planet faces are an explosion in some 7 billion years in the faraway future and the likely crash of an asteroid, the same kind that violently wiped out Earth's largest species, the dinosaurs. However, there are other things to fear that could invade us from space, and in this instance, the sole perpetrator is our long-known sun. The sun might be responsible for giving us light by day and providing us with heat but this same star could also cause the regression of humanity and of what numerous generations have worked so hard on to perfect, technology. In the case of a Carrington-level solar storm, the world would stop for a long time and might take time to recover as the waves of charged particles head towards Earth's magnetosphere and atmosphere, GPS and satellites would fail. You really do not want to be caught on a flight when this occurs because, as you can probably guess, the pilot will immediately lose navigation and will have to maneuver the plane to make a crash landing. Hopefully there's a body of water nearby or else the casualties would be severe. Satellites would crash and the NASA ACE satellite, which is supposed to learn of the impending storm, would also take a huge hit. With the satellites down, communication systems would have a huge crash. Good news? You'll get to see very beautiful auroras in the sky right before the Earth plunges into darkness. Then, as you pick out your phone to post it on social media, you'll realize that you can't access the internet. Bye-bye Twitter, bye-bye Instagram, bye-bye TikTok. From the 1989 solar storm, the power outages lasted just hours. This would be far worse, and the power outage could last anywhere from days to months, depending on how badly the power grids succumb to the storm. Most power grids are connected, and an intense failure in one could trigger a domino-like effect, thus causing others to fall into the same predicament. Trillions of dollars in damage are likely to be recorded, and it might take us about 5 to 10 years to fully recover from the hit. Electricity will be gone as well, so a large number of people will no doubt get stuck on the elevators with no out. If your water system is electric powered, you'll be out of water in a couple of hours. Your fridge and freezer would pretty much be useless. ATMs will be inaccessible. Cards wouldn't be working and transfers would be impossible. The world of crypto and NFTs would be gone for as long as the internet and electricity are out. Cash would be a treasured and rare commodity. 
Stored food will come in handy during this period and could go a long way in sustaining you before the world returns back to order. You shouldn't be surprised if you walked to your local grocery stores and found them empty. Hopefully, the fire outbreaks do not occur as the power grids collapse, but if they do, they'll be deadly because they'll be difficult to put out. Our healthcare system would take a huge and irreversible hit as patients with critical conditions depending on electricity would be largely affected. And for our generation that is so addicted to technology, there would be no social media to rant on. Solar flares might look spectacular, but they are very dangerous and could very well plunge us into darkness and return us to the pre-technological period if they cause catastrophic solar storms. We might not physically get hurt by a solar storm, but our technology could take a crippling hit. As we dread another impending storm in a couple of years, we can only wonder, is an internet apocalypse imminent?